few acres, but a very thoughtful introduction. Uh, Vice President Nicholas Doe Cook, uh, Director Mayo uh, Cohen, Dr. Richard Bush, uh, Professor Zwing Han, Professor Perry Chang, and distinguished guests, alumni, ladies and gentlemen. It gives some great pleasure to be invited to attend this event today. On behalf of the government of the Republic of China, I would like, first of all, to extend a very warm welcome to the scholars and experts Assembly here today, and in particular to Columbia University Vice President Dr. Nicholas Kirk and Director of the Witherhead East Asian Institute, Dr. Mayong Cohen, and my good friend Dr. Richard Gush. I would also like to express my appreciation to Columbia University of Tuition Taipei to host this symposium celebrating the 60th anniversary of its East Asian Institute. The Columbia University has long had a brand reputation and its leading position in academic academia is admired internationally. The fact that Columbia University is with the head East Asia Institute decide to hold this important and meaningful symposium in Taipei demonstrate the value it plays on Taiwan-related issues and underline the closest of its ties with academia in Taiwan. Once again, we thank Columbia University for making this decision and for giving people who care about Taiwan the opportunity to come together and discuss latest developments and trends in terms of politics, economic, and society. The views exchange will no doubt offer valuable insights into how to reshape Type 1 and to in its relation in the regional and global levels. The theme of today's symposium is Taiwan's 21st century politics, economic, and society. As we perceive it, the 21st century so far has been characterized by the pursuit of not just economic development, but of democracy and freedom. Looking at the latest development around the world, we see so many variables and uncertainties, such as the current tensions in the Korean Peninsula, the resignation of the Japanese former Prime Minister Hatoyama, the sovereign, sovereign debt crisis in Europe, the ongoing fight against terrorism, a natural disaster prolonged by climate change, an international standoffs over nuclear non-proliferation, and so forth. All this goes to show the tremendous challenges that the international community faces in terms of politics economic and society, Taiwan's location lends its a certain strategic importance at the regional and even the global level. Taiwan has great progress, made great progress with democracy over the past 
20 years, a fact that has been widely recognized around the world. In 1987, the government did martial law and put Taiwan on course for a era of muddy party politics and diverse democratic society. In 1996, Taiwan holds its first direct presidential elections, bringing about a constitutional system where sovereignty rests upon with the people. The result of the presidential election in the year 2000 saw Taiwan experience its first turnover power, an experience that was repeated eight years later in 2008 presidential elections. This second peaceful transition of power demonstrates the democracy in Taiwan has matured. As the American scholar Shamir Hundinson would have described it, Taiwan has entered the stage of democratic consolidation and become a stable democracy. Taiwan is among the few Asian countries that truly possesses a vibrant and diverse democratic system. Indeed, former U.S. President George Bush once praised Taiwan for being a beacon of democracy in Asia and the world. In terms of economy, Taiwan, no front from any other country, endure a very different year, difficult years, due to the financial tsunami. To cope with the crisis, the government adopt a wide range of measures aimed at creating jobs, reducing carbon emissions, saving energy, stimulating innovation, taking part in international and regional integration, and so on. Fortunately, Taiwan has been very seen, has seen a very clear sign of recovery over the last six months. We have had se seven consecutive months of declining unemployment and achieved double-digit GDP growth of 13.27% for the first quarter of the year. Strong export growth is another indicator that Taiwan's economy is on the mend. Exports for May are reported to have grown by 57.9% year on year, the highest growth ever record for a single month. My government has previously estimated that Taiwan's economy would expand by 4.27% this year. However, if the economy continues to rally, the figure could well be revised upward to over 6%. The IMF is equally up, up bit about Taiwan's economic outlook and has focused growth of 6.5%, with inflation at just 1.5%. Should these figures be accurate, Taiwan will rank among the best performing nations in not only in East Asia, but anywhere. According to the 2010 World Competitiveness Yearbook, published by the IMD Business School in Lausanne, Switzerland. Taiwan ranks eight out of 58 countries in the overall competitiveness rankings. A huge jump from 23rd last year. More importantly, Taiwan has this year ranks third in business efficiency and six in government efficiency.
Our best performances over the last 16 years. The Taiwan Strait, Korean Peninsula, and the Southern Sea, South, South China Sea, are potential cross points for conflict in Asia. In past year, mainland China haunted Taiwan on the diplomatic front, distracting our participation in the international arena. Since President Ma ying proposed a diplomatic truce across Taiwan Strait and adapt the flexible diplomacy policy, close strait tension has eased. The two sides of the strait have stopped engaging in so-called checkbook diplomacy and biding for each other's diplomatic allies. As a result, Taiwan's participation in international fallout has been on the rise. For example, Taiwan has attended the World Health Assembly for the last two years as an observer. Moreover, interaction has grown between Taiwan and many countries with which it lacks formal diplomatic relations such as United States, Japan, and the European Union. Take the U.S. as an example. President Obama, Secretary of State Clinton, and various uh, other State Department officials have recognized my government's effort to improve cross-strait relations. These countries also have shown willingness to support Taiwan in, an, in its effort to expand its presence in the international community. Taiwan has set its reputation of being a troublemaker and remained itself as a peacemaker in East Asia. Since 2008, cross-trade relations has been gradually peace-solving. During this short two-year span, the two sides have signed 12 agreements and reached one point of con consensus. At this point, the two of us are entering the final stage of negotiation for the signing of Cross-Strait Economic Cooperation Framework Agreement, or ECRO. Moreover, a total of 270 flights now operate directly between Taiwan and mainland China on a weekly basis. On June 14, tomorrow, the direct flights between Shanghai's Hongqiao Airport and Taipei's Songshan Airport will be launched. Bring the number of regular scheduled cross flights to 370 per week. This year alone, we expect that more than 1 million tourists from mainland China will visit Taiwan. If this holds true, mainland China will replace Japan as Taiwan's largest source of tourists. Given that Taiwan has adopted a new cross-trade policy that is proactive, rational, and practical, exchange between the two sides a greatly increase, especially in the areas of trade, culture, and tourism. Other major powers in the world, such as the US, Japan, and the EU, have been closely monitoring the development of cross-trade relations, recognizing Taiwan's growing role in the political and economic affairs of the region. These powers have been more willing to engage in greater cooperation with Taiwan, thereby bring highlighting the strategic role and that Taiwan plays in the area. Despite the acceleration of Taiwan's 
the assimilation of Taiwan's political and social development in recent decades. Taiwan remains a young democracy. Therefore, more time is needed for democratic ideas and concepts to take deep root in Taiwan's society. To become a model, a role model for other developing countries throughout the world, Taiwan must continue to consolidate its de de democracy and carry out political reforms. We must host an environment that encourage all political parties to uphold fair and healthy competition, advance the government's efficiency and transparency, ensure clean governance, and protect the right of people to participate in public affairs. The fact that our government will still need to do more to ensure full participation by the people in public affairs is illustrated by Taiwan's negotiation with mainland China on the signing of various cooperative agreements, including an ECWA. The importance of democratic procedures must be taken seriously if the people are to enjoy at the very, at the very least some sort of home, home safeguards for their rights. This remains one of the biggest challenges to the consolidation of Taiwan's democracy and is an area where the government still has more work to do. Taiwan has played the best endeavor to, re to re realize a high rate of economic growth on average between 1960 and mid-90s. Its economic grew at a remarkable rate of 8% each year. However, Taiwan's growth, Taiwan's over-exploitation of natural resources has severely damaged the environment, washing the quality of life rather than raising it. Currently, countries worldwide have put top priority on finding ways to realize sustainable economic growth. Due to its limited natural resources and dependence on trade, Taiwan has been particularly vulnerable to the global financial crisis and climate change. Therefore, Taiwan must seek more innovative ways to attain sustainable de development. President Ma Ying-jeou's cross-trade policy has helped mitigate cross-trade tensions. However, reunification remains mainland China's ultimate objective, while most of the people of Taiwan prefer to maintain status quo. So there are still huge differences between the two sides. Both in the general mid-side of our people and in the forms of our government. Above all, many in China has not abandoned the option of using military force against Taiwan, and its rapid economic growth in recent years has enabled the mainland to build up its military court and increase the number of missiles targeting Taiwan. These are currently more than 1,300 missiles pointed at Taiwan. In terms of bilateral relations, Taiwan has maintained strong ties with the United States and Japan. Based on the Taiwan Relations Act of 1979, 
the U.S. has been setting defensive weapons and providing military training to us, thereby further ensuring our security. The relations between men in China and the United States are com complicated by a wide array of international relations, such as nuclear ambitions of Iran and North Korea, global climate changes, and cooperation in clean energy development. In this light, we have to ensure that Taiwan's interests are not sacrificed in the dealings between the U.S. and men in China. Likewise, in our interaction with men in China, we have to guarantee Taiwan's security. Taiwan has successfully entered the 21st century as an open and vigorous democratic country with a sustainable economic and a strong military to keep pace with the rest of the world and ensure the livelihood of its people for generations to come. Taiwan must continue to build up its infrastructure and maintain peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. More importantly, Taiwan must establish more cordial and positive relations with men and China in order to give the people on the other side of the Taiwan Strait the opportunity to appreciate our value and lifestyle. Those at this point, I would like to reiterate the six steps to a better Taiwan as envied by President Ma ying during the celebration for the second anniversary of his inauguration. The six steps are to strengthen the country through innovation, revive the country by promoting culture, shape the country through environmental protection, stabilize the country by adhering to constitution and secure the country by providing social services and protect the country by promoting peace. This will create the foundation for a golden decade in Taiwan. In this light, I believe that my countries in the 21st century will have the following characteristics. First, an innovative Taiwan. According to the World Economic Forum 2008 and 2007 and annual report, economic development in countries where gross domestic income is less than 3,000 US dollars per capita depends on such factors of protection as land and labor. For those with GDI between 3,000 and 17,000 US dollars per capita, the key economic driver is efficiency. In the country with GDI of over 17,000 US dollars per capita, the key to development is innovation. The government has therefore committed to promoting industrial innovation so as to strengthen Taiwan's competitiveness amid the challenge of the 21st century. Given the importance of innovation to Taiwan's future industrial development, the government has just adopted the in Industrial Innovation Act to encourage research and development. The Industrial Innovation Act differs from the previous schedule of industrial upgrading, which target specific industry or tax incentive. With the new Industrial Innovation Act, there are no restrictions on either 
the size or type of enterprises that are eligible for tax incentives. Instead, the incentives are targeted towards four specific functions, namely research and development, human resources training, the running of operational headquarters, and the international logistic and distribution. In other words, any businesses, whether it's size, and no matter it is in the manufacturing, service, and agriculture, can enjoy tax incentives for the above mentioned types of activities. Taiwan has a good reputation for innovation, as evidenced by a gold medal hall at the invent uh, in inventors trade show in Nuremberg last November and at the international exhibition of in invention of Geneva in this April. Indeed, in the global competitive report released by World Economic Forum last year, Taiwan placed six out of 133 economic entities in the innovation category. Globally, Taiwan has the largest number of invention patents per capita. Per capita. Likewise, in a study on patent productivity by Switzerland's IMD this year, last year, Taiwan ranks third out of all nations in the world. Taiwan is a powerhouse of traditional Chinese culture. For more than 60 years now, Taiwan has been working hard to preserve and promote traditional Chinese culture. And because of our unique history, Taiwan has become something of a culture made in port. According to Europe and the US data, the value of cultural sector output in Western countries has gradually surpassed that of the manufacturing sector. The fabric of Taiwan's culture tapestries represent a valuable cultural asset that is ripe of the picking. It was for this reason that the Office of President has six round tables on cultural and the creative industry last year to harness the energy and the credibility of the cultural sector. Furthermore, the Culture and the Creative Enterprises Development Act has been just enacted. We hope that organizing major international events will serve the dual, dual purpose of promoting Taiwan's culture on the one hand and enhancing the development of our culture industry on the other hand. From the war games 2009 in Kaohsiung and the Depth Olympics in Taipei to preparation for the International Flora Exports and the Centennial Centennial celebration of the public China in the near future. Such events showcase the uniqueness of Taiwan's core values. That is, Taiwan society is open and enterprising, and our people are kind and hardworking, honest and forgiving. I believe that Taiwan's free democratic and diverse society gives us an advantage over the world's other ethnic Chinese communities. If we can make the most of these advantages, as well as the global connection we already enjoy, and further com com complement them by raising cultural awareness and developing our cultural industry, then I'm convinced that we can create a new turning point in Taiwan's resurgence. 
All countries are concerned about environmental issues, especially climate change. And unless, unless we take action now, the world will have a bleak future. Mankind's over-exploitation of natural resources is calling the world to change, leading to one disaster after another. As a responsible member of the international community, Taiwan cannot simply sit on the sidelines. Therefore, it is making every effort to lower its carbon footprint by reducing its greenhouse gas emissions. For instance, the government has promoted measures to conserve energy and reduce carbon emissions and has adapted the framework of Taiwan's sustainable energy policy. It also has emphasized that energy security, economic development, and environmental protection are key factors in the development of a sustainable energy. We should do more to replace hoyer's fuels with green energy sources. With this goal in mind, the government has designated 2010 as a year of conserving energy and reducing carbon, carbon emissions, and has formulated major action plans so as to better promote related measures. Over the past two years, Taiwan's carbon emissions have fallen by 4.4%. We hope to continue this trend and cut the late emissions by at least 30% below the business as usual levels by the year 2020. Taiwan has set higher targets than either South Korea and Singapore has, for example. Although also another factor for government around the world is the need to conserve energy and reduce carbon emission. Countries everywhere has, have spared no effort to develop green energy industry. As for Taiwan, its green energy technologies developed by enterprises working on LED lighting, wind power, and electric vehicles have been highly competitive globally. Early this year, Mr. Thomas Freeman pointed out in a speech in Taiwan that although Taiwan lacks natural resources, including petroleum, its green industry command a position at the whole front due to their high credible human resources. In the knowledge economic era, Taiwan faces constant pressures to upgrade and transform its industrial structure, with the gap between the rich and the poor reaching extremes. Taiwan's society is becoming ham-shaped and experiencing problems greater than ever. Therefore, the government must focus more on ensuring social fairness and justice. Each year, Taiwan's living environment and quality of life improve, leading to an ever declining birth rate. This can be seen from the fact the number of children entering elementary school has fallen below the 100,000 mark in recent years. It goes without saying that Taiwan's low birth rate is becoming a serious problem. The aging of society is also becoming another issue of concern. For these reasons, the government has put top priority on ensuring the stable development of Taiwan society. Over the past two years, 
the government has launched a national pension system, a table pension system, and then elderly farmer pension system, so as to better care for our senior citizens. Moreover, the government has launched programs to encourage couples to start families. Young couples benefit from this, from various forms of home buying assistance, for example, and to encourage them to have children, they are being offered different types of children care allowances, as well as maternity and, and fraternity leave. To take better care of the disadvantages, the government has started the Earned Income Tax Credit Project, which has benefited over 550,000 people this so far. In addition, plans are in the work for the long-term care insurance to assist the elderly in their final years. Budget allowances. The government will carry out this and other projects over time so that society most vulnerable, the elderly and the young, are fully cared of. Respect for human rights underpins all of mankind's progress and is the driving force beyond, behind many modern-day international laws and political developments. During its democratic transformation, Taiwan has full-heartedly pursued the idea and values of democracy and human rights. The Ma administration has launched various policies to promote human rights and 2009 marked an important year in the history of human rights movements in this country where we ratified the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. We also passed an Enforcement Act for these two international covenants, those incorporating them into our domestic law and further cementing the legal foundation for human rights protection. Taiwan is keeping a piece of the global mainstream in this respect, which I hope reassure the international community of our strong determination to fulfill our obligations and protect human rights. In the future, Taiwan will set up a Human Rights Advisory Committee under the President's office. And in, and in doing so, we will refer to the UN's Paris Principles, while also considering the nation's current situation and system of constitutional government. This committee will be tasked with finding ways to strengthen the nation's human rights policies and coordinating related affairs. Furthermore, the committee will look into the feasibility of setting up a national body in charge of human rights issues so as to enable Taiwan to gradually put in place international standards and become a country that can truly contribute to the world's efforts to protect and promote human rights. This month, 60 years ago, the war broke out on the Korean Peninsula, and the two Koreans have been in a tense standoff ever since, despite the passage of six decades. In contrast to this, tension across the Taiwan Street have sub subsided considerably since our government began promoting a diplomatic 
truce with men in China two years ago. Today, the Taiwan Strait is no longer a rush point for military conflict in Asia. Indeed, we are currently working to strengthen trade and economic relations and promote cultural exchanges with men in China in the hope of establishing a genuine framework for economic co prosperity and peaceful coexistence. However, we should view to further developing peaceful and stable military rela relations with men in China, as well as boosting our confidence and leverage in negotiation with men in China. We, nonetheless, still hope that the U.S. government will continue providing us with the defense weapons we need, such as the F-16 fighter jets. Furthermore, we also hope that the international community, particularly major powers like the U.S., Japan, and the European Union, will face up to the fact that the people of Taiwan have a pressing desire to participate in international organization and their activities. We would very much appreciate it if the international community would assist us with our goal of participating in such international organization as the International Civil Aviation Organization and the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Exchange. It is very clear to us that to achieve peaceful coexistence across the Taiwan Strait, we must adhere to the principle of no no duplication, no independence, and no use of force under the framework of our Constitution. With the 1992's consensus as serving as the foundation for the development of our cross-strait relations, reconciliation comes first, followed by cooperation and then lastly, the establishment of peace. These incrementary developments are of vital importance. The centennial anniversary of the Republic of China and Taiwan was next year in 2011. At this important moment in our history, the government is responsible of bringing together resources from all walks of society for making a concerted effort to plan a grand celebration to mark the nation's 100 years. The president has assigned me to be the chairman of the preparatory committee. And we are very much hope that the celebra celebratory activities we will, will be holding underscore Taiwan's ambition to forge ahead. Among the series of events being planned, a number of international, a number are international in scale. They include the 2010 Taipei International Roller Exports, the 2011 International Design Alliances Congress Taipei, the 2011 World Association of Symphonic Bands and Assemblies Conference and the International Press Institute World Congress 2011. These events will give Thai people from around the world the chance to see the progress Taiwan has made over the past hundred years, as well as our vision for future development and the core values we share with each much of the world. I would like to sincerely invite everyone here today 
to come back to Taiwan so that you might share in the sanitarian, sanitarian with us. As President Ma put it, in some ways, the last century was merely a comma in the annals of Chinese history that stretched back thousands of years. But looking at the bigger picture, it is apparent that the last century has been nothing short of an acclamation mark. It has been 100 years of struggle, 100 years of experimentation, and 100 years of education. Over the course of these 100 years, a people learn that they too have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The next 100 years will be a century filled with challenges and opportunities. Together, we will strive to continue Taiwan's political, economic, and social development so as to make the Taiwan of the 21st century an up uplifting force in the international community, a role model of democracy, an economic powerhouse, a country known for a harmonious society. Hopefully, Taiwan can set an example that inspire future generations on both sides of the Taiwan Strait and perhaps even the world too. I would like to conclude my remarks now by wishing the conference every success. May everyone present here bless with the best of health and happiness. I hope that you have a very pleasant stay in Taiwan and that you take back fond memories of your time here. I also hope to see you on these shows again at some point in the near future. Thank you very much. <laughs>